Genesis chapter 2, <clears throat> and we're going to read it in Genesis 2 and 3, and then I'll wander quickly throughout the Bible, um, try to get through everything here. Genesis chapter 2. If you haven't found it yet, just leave your Bible wherever it is and look intelligent and act like you have it. And uh, Genesis 2 and verse 15 says this, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So there is the command. Don't don't eat the fruit. God had put them in the Garden of Eden in perfection and paradise uh, to be there. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14, the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and the dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And in Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I can, uh, commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, and thou shalt return to the ground, for out of it was thou taken, and for dust thou art, and dust shalt thou return. All right, let's go ahead and pray, and we'll get into this passage. Father, thank you for the chance to teach your word. I pray that the Spirit would speak. I pray that we'd be um, helped, and Lord, really just uh, fix our thinking here in a different way on life and on eternity, Lord, and uh, on how life works. And I pray you'd give us peace through this and uh, rest through this. Lord, I pray we, you just make it, uh, give me Godspeed with the time we have, Lord. There's a lot to teach here, and I pray, Lord, that I would uh, just be controlled by your Spirit and uh, quickly we'd grasp these truths. We've been blessed already with the blessing of seeing what's been done there in, in this ministry in Kenya. And we pray that you would uh, continue to bless us with the preaching of the word now in Jesus' name. Amen. They were told not to eat the fruit of the tree, and they ate it, and bad things happened. And uh, uh, I want to talk about, uh, so the world is unfair. And that's a question mark at the end. So the world's unfair. Um, and uh, I want to say very clearly that this world's messed up. And it's unfair sometimes. Sometimes get bad people do bad things and get away with it. Sometimes good people do good things and have bad things happen. Okay? That's, that's the world we live in. Sometimes uh, uh, you have great plans and the plans fall apart. No fault of your own. It's just things are messed up. And uh, and uh, I want to talk about that. And uh, since the world is messed up, we see there's a curse that comes upon mankind. God said, don't eat this, 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 this fruit. But if you do, uh, you're going to die. Now notice, first of all, they ate the fruit. In the Bible, Jesus, uh, it, it said there, it said, in the day you eat that fruit, you're going to die. They ate the fruit. They lived long lives after that. Because they didn't physically die. He was talking about a spiritual death. Okay, their spirit immediately died. That's why you have to be born again because your spirit dies when you sin. It immediately just it immediately kills the spirit of a man, uh, the spiritual part that fellowships with God. The second you first sin, boom, you're spiritually dead. Uh, you have to be born again. You have to get new life spiritually. You're born of the spirit. The Bible says in John three. Um, that's why you have to be saved. That's why you must be born again because when you sin, you're spiritually dead. And the day that the minute they ate that fruit, their spirit, their, they spiritually died. Physically, they were alive. Their soul was alive, they could still talk and communicate, but spiritually they were dead, they were separated from God and all these things. And, uh, and, and a curse came upon everything. Everything went out of kilter. You're in a world, they were going to live forever. They were, the, the animals, uh, they, they did not, uh, the, the, even the lions, none of the animals, they weren't carnivorous. They would, they would eat plants. They could walk up and pet uh, the lion. They could ride on the tiger. They could, uh, uh, they could uh, uh, go and wrestle with the bear. They could do whatever they wanted to because there was no death and no sorrow and no suffering. The world is perfect. It was a good life. He said, if you eat this thing, but you know what? Humans are 
never content. <laughs> it's amazing how when things are good, we start realizing, well, it could be better, and then we go do something foolish and ruin the good thing we had. Because humans, the Bible says, the eyes, eyes of men are never full. And uh, and so we got to be careful about that. And, this, and I want to talk for a second about these curses. First of all, a serpent, which the devil took the form of, a, a serpent, um, was, uh, was immediately became on his belly. So the snake before was upright, probably a dinosaur, and uh, boom, immediately they went, and uh, they were cursed. Uh, all those, uh, all the serpents were. Enmity came in verse uh, 15. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and their seed. Understand, in the earth, there is never going to be strife at all of any kind. I'm a person who hates conflict. I just, I go, I go, so I don't wait to avoid conflict. I just, I'll just do it myself, or I'll just take up the slack or pay the extra. I just don't like to fight. Uh, I, I just don't. And, 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 and can you imagine a world where there is no enmity? But now there's going to be enmity between Satan and, and between uh, uh, mankind and between uh, uh, God's seed and, and, and uh, uh, between a woman's seed and, and Satan. And now we're going to have a spiritual war. Now we're tempted. And now we have to battle all the time. And now uh, the devil gets people to hate each other and fight and strife and be greedy. And all, all the strife, all this came upon the world. And now people are messed up. And now the devil is around there causing strife. Now there's enmity between people. That did never have to happen. But that is the condition we're in now. Yeah. That's why we have to have police officers. I wish we never had to have a military. But you know what? It would be very foolish not to have a military. Because the condition of the world. Yeah. I wish there's never another war. I don't like war. Blessed are the peacemakers, God said. God doesn't want war. But you know what? The problem is, is there is enmity in the world. There's people who rob you. People who take over your country. People who do. It, it, it's, it's a world full of that. And, and it's in the world. And we see that. Woman is now cursed. She's cursed in childbirth. Uh, now, when she has a baby, it's incredibly painful. The worst pain. Before that, it wouldn't have been. We don't know what would have happened. A baby would have been an inch inch long. I don't know. Maybe uh, yeah, maybe uh, uh, the baby came uh, some different way. Uh, who knows? Maybe she sat on an egg. I don't know. Um, but uh, but but whatever happened, it wasn't painful. And uh, and and can you can you imagine how easy it'd be to have kids if your kids were perfect and never sinned? And they never did anything wrong. They just they perfectly obedient. They said, I love you, Mom. And it's, what can I do to serve you today, Dad? And can you imagine? Don't imagine you'll be very upset about life as it is. And, uh, but, that's, but that's the way the world was. And it was, uh, there was no pain in childbirth and in child rearing. It was, it was perfection. And the curse came upon woman. Uh, and in sorrow, she would conceive morning sickness and all the things that happen and, 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 and that happened with, 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 with childbirth. All that came upon Eve because of that. And then the family structure changed. Strangely enough, it's the, the family structure was a little different before then. It looks like, from everything you read here, Adam and Eve were just partners and there was no, there, 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 there was no uh, man about the woman. There was no authority structure there. The man was not stronger or dominant over a woman. But when that happened, it says your husband's going to rule over you now. When a woman wants rights, she'll have to ask men for rights. Because, because it's going to be different. The world's going to be cursed. And, 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 and women, your, your position changed. Now you have to submit yourself to that knucklehead. And, uh, and, and now you got to... Uh, and, and now um, he's, dom he's dominant. He's domineering. And, and that's, that happened. So women got messed up because of the curse. But then it continues. Now man's messed up. It goes, if he, uh, verse uh, 6, well, let me just go back to verse, I'll read some of these verses. Uh, verse 15, I'll put, this is Genesis 3, 15. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The Messiah is coming. Unto the woman, he said, I'll greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shall I bring forth children, and thy desire shall be thy husband. And he shall rule over thee. And unto Adam, she said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten the fruit of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Wow. Now that's big. He just said the ground is now cursed. 
the ground wasn't cursed before then. Nature was completely different. It, it would now, you're going to have to work hard. The ground is not going to just bring, God planted the garden before. And they just brought forth an incredible fruit. All Adam had to do was walk up and say, Ooh, look at that. That's a perfect uh, turnip. That is an incredible apricot. Look at it. It's perfect. And nothing made you fat. And nothing made you sick. And nothing made you upset. And, nothing, uh, and everything was perfect. And, and ice cream tasted good. And it grew on trees and everything else. And, uh, and it was paradise. Okay? And it wasn't fattening. And, uh, and everything was perfect. And all of a sudden, now the ground is messed up. And now the ground, now dandelions grow really good and your grass doesn't. I don't know why I can't, I can't weed my grass uh, and, and you leave one little micro speck of one root in that weed and it's coming back. And then you have to do everything in the world to get the things you want to grow to grow. And, and, and the things you don't want to grow, grow like crazy. <laughs> Okay, uh, and your neighbor's zucchini grows crazy, and he wants to give you zucchini every day, and uh, and 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 so everything grows wrong, and everything it, the ground is cursed. Okay, and it's, and there's places where nothing will grow, and there's places that are hard, and, and the ground is cursed because of this. Adam, you're gonna have a hard time making a living now. Cursed be the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. He says, you know what? Now, before you walk in this garden, there was not even a thorn in the ground. There was not a thorn in any bush. Nothing poked you. Nothing hurt. Everything was easy. Now the ground has, now bushes grow thorns. Now blackberries grow like weeds in the Northwest. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and you can't get rid of them. And, and they, 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 they attack you. The, the thorns go after you, it seems like, when you're trying to cut them down. And, 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 and this is what happens. I go out and spray my, my orchard and my, my fruit trees because they get all these diseases on them. Why my, my thorns go, and, and, uh, and I have to spray them to kill them. Why? Because the ground's cursed. The world's messed up. Yeah. Now, it's, it's workable, but it's work. Yeah. It's hard. The ground's cursed. All of nature's cursed. Now you're going to die, Adam. You weren't going to die before. There's going to be enmity. Adam and Eve, one of your child children is going to get jealous of the other children and kill them. Because the world's messed up now. The world is a sin-cursed world we live in. That's what we live in. When you got up this morning, some of you groaned while you got up. And some of you, it was physical, some of it was you're tired. Uh, uh, you get out of bed and, and you start your process of straightening out and getting up. And, uh, and, and you know what? It, it, it's because we're cursed. And people get old now and, and your body hurts. And now there's car wrecks and now there's meanness and now there's uh, sorrow and now there's death and now there's war. And now there, but God never intended any of that. He said, Look, you can do everything. You're, the whole world's yours. There's just one tree. Don't eat the fruit from that one tree. I'm big on free will. I want to give you a choice. I always give men a choice. So I'm going to make this really easy. I'm going to make delicious food all around you. Nothing's going to hurt. You have every animal to do with whatever you want. Life is, you're in paradise. Just, I, I need to make you have free will. Man needs to be able to have a choice. I'm not going to make robots who can't choose anything. So I'm going to put one in the entire garden. I'm going to put one tree you can't eat of. Every other tree, eat of it. Every other fruit, anything you want. Enjoy it. You'll never hurt. You'll never sorrow. Nothing will ever happen bad. Just don't eat that one fruit. <laughs> and they ate it. And everything went warp and tweak and bend. And the whole world, the ground changed. Earth changed. Plants changed. Everything changed in the world. The nature of man changed. Yeah. Everything got warped. It's like the car you had, and it got just nailed by another car, and the frame bent, and the whole thing tweaked, and every part of it's loose. And even though you might put new body panels on that thing, it's never right anymore. Yeah. It always kind of goes down the road sideways, and the tires wear weird, and the, the doors close wrong, and things leak in the engine, and just all of a sudden leak now, because everything got torqued in that thing. That's nature. Nature's torqued. Nature's wrong. You're, it's easier to do wrong than right now. It's very easy to want to get angry and get revenge. It's very hard to love your enemy. Because we're in a sin-cursed world. That's what we live in. It's now uphill. Now it's a battle to do right. Now bad things happen. And that's the world we live in. Not that God wanted it that way. 
but God has to punish. And, and that's what he told would happen. Before there was paradise, it never even rained. It, even, even the ground. Look at the, how easy it was a garden. Chapter 2 and verse 5 and 6. Chapter 2 and verse 5 and 6. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth and water the whole face of the ground. Every morning, God just made a little water come up, up out of the ground, up out of the earth, and everything was watered, and it didn't even rain. Seattle was not invented, and, uh, and uh, everything was nice. It didn't rain. It wasn't bad weather. It was a perfect temperature. It wasn't hot and humid, and it wasn't cold and freezing. It was perfect. How many of you want to have a talk with Adam and Eve when we get there, and uh, and 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 uh, and, and just, just uh, they got they're they're hidden in a secret compartment of heaven where nobody can ever get to them. And uh, but uh, you know uh, the world's messed up. And that's just part of what we've got to deal with. Uh, it, it's weird how messed up it all became. But people ask the strange question, if there is a God, why are there wars? That's because we're in a sin-cursed world. God didn't want this. If there, if there is a God, why didn't God save me from this terrible thing that happened to me? Look, you and I are in a sin-cursed world. And bad things are going to happen. Yes, sir. Now, we're going to give you some points about that in a minute, but I want you to understand, look, you can, you can do everything right and accept that things aren't all going to go right. You might do everything right with your kid, and the kid might not turn out right. Why? Because they have a fallen nature in them. You might go and work hard and plan well, and something tr tragic happens in your finances, and it collapses. <clears throat> Because we're in a sin cursed world. It's, we're not, God never said, He said the opposite. God never said this world will be perfect. He said, if you sin, this world's going to be messed up. And so that's where we live. And that's, once you grasp that, now listen to me, it sounds strange, but once you grasp the world's sin cursed and messed up, and you start from there, it gets a lot easier to deal with things. Because a whole bunch of people are looking for paradise on earth. And they get upset and messed up and bitter when paradise doesn't happen. That, uh, one of the things the Bible does, look, you say, Pastor, when you're spiritual and nice and love people, you get taken advantage of. I don't. I know the nature of people and act accordingly. <laughs> I know who's sin cursed. So I don't hand the guy my wallet. I don't give somebody my social security number who's not supposed to say, why? Because I know the nature of man. Yeah. It doesn't mess you up. It makes you ready for this world. It makes you wise. It makes you say, I, I better marry carefully because I might marry a messed up person. Mm -hmm. It makes you careful in life. You say, you know what? Bad things might happen so I should put some money away. That's when you save it and you don't spend it, just so you know that, if you don't know what that means. And, and I should save some money. Why? Because bad things happen. That makes you look at your own nature and say, I better not trust myself. I know I'm going to do something bad if, I, if I'm there. And you don't trust your nature. It makes you very smart. Because why? Because you know the world you live in. It doesn't mean you dis, you're just walking around distrustful. It makes you, when you find someone you can trust and someone who's good, love them a whole bunch more. It makes when you find a good place or a good church, you say, this is awesome. Because God has carved out a nice niche here and you, you take advantage of the good things in your life. I'm going to give you some quick points here about uh, how to live joyfully in a sin-cursed world. But I'm going to hurry. Number one, accept the world's messed up. <laughs> I'm going to read some verses on that. Uh, Jesus said this in John 16, 33. Uh, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. You understand? Look, I understand my body is going to get older. Okay? I understand that. So what do I do? I plan accordingly. I plan so I'm not going to have as hard a physical labor when I get older. Mm -hmm. I plan financially for that. I plan nutritionally for that. I take care of my body. Because I know my body, if I don't take care of it, it's going to be really messed up. 
Okay? And so the whole bunch of things you prepare because you understand the world you live in. And you prepare for those things. Understand the world is messed up. I'm going to read you a couple of verses out of 1 Peter. And again, I'm going to go a bit quickly over 1 Peter. And if the missionaries, if you if you get down in there, if you can hear me, you can come in the room. It won't bother me. That's fine. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 12 and 13. It says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try uh, fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. Okay, look, it says there, don't act like some st something strange happened to you with your with your fiery trials. <laughs> Can I tell you, I am thoroughly enjoying this massive project of the Philippines. But you know why? Say, Pastor, has nothing gone wrong? Oh, things have gone wrong. But I knew things were going to go wrong. And you know what? When I go there, things are going to go wrong. <laughs> but you know what? I'm coming into it. You ready? Not thinking, this is going to be paradise. Everything's going to go so nice and so good. No car will break down. No disorganization will happen. No people will miss connections. Nobody's going to be mad at me. Nothing's going to get lost. It's not going to be hot and sweaty. It's not going to be humid. I'm not living in La La Land. <laughs> it's going to be miserably hot and humid. It's the Philippines. It's always like that. I'll get. I'll walk out of the air-conditioned airport, and that's the torture, is they put you in an air-conditioned airport. Because then you walk out and you go, <gasps> I can't breathe. Where did the air go? <gasps> because it's humid. And I hate humidity. But you know what? When I'm prepared for humidity, and I don't wear this yeah. torturous thing and these torturous things, um, then I'm fine. You know, I won't be surprised if a car breaks down. I won't be surprised if, if, if somebody in the group gets sick. As long as it's not me, I'm fine. And and uh, because my fallen nature is self-centered. And uh, but, uh, but you know what? We go and and we expect bad things to happen. The devil to fight it, or just the nature of mankind. Look, cars break. Everything deteriorates. Outside of evolutionary theory, where everything gets better all the time, everything deteriorates. You buy a new car, guess what? It's starting to die. Yeah. <laughs> and and you, you just say, you know what? Bad things happen. And you go in prepared, not surprised, though some strange thing happened. I say this. I say, people say, why do bad things happen? I ask, why do good things happen? <laughs> If I were God, nothing good would happen in this world. I would just fry everybody. I would have fried myself about 25 years ago. I would have said, what are you, knucklehead? What are you doing? I would have said, I I'm tired of you. What's wrong with you? You know better than that. When God slaps you, you go a long way. And, uh, and I would have... I would have, I would have but you know what? I am so surprised when God blesses me. <laughs> I'm surprised good things happen. I can't believe that God lets wicked nations go on. And wicked people, he doesn't let worse things happen to them. It's amazing that God's mercy lets good things happen. Amen. I deserve much worse than I get in life. I've had a few bumps. But a few bad things happen. You know what? Much less than I deserve. Don't be surprised that some strange, those some strange thing happen unto you, the fiery trials. Job 14, 1, man that is born of woman is a few days and full of troubles. <laughs> accept it. Number one, accept that the world is messed up. Although, we should try to make it better. Yeah. Look, some people are going to go through enough bad times. Let's make them have good times. I'm going to do this thing, and it's going to it's going to be hard. It'll be the hardest on me. I've got this thing coming up. We're going to we're going to have a week of different things. We're going to have a week where we're going to do nothing secular, only things for God uh, and entertainment. We're going to do a week where we're going to light up everywhere we go. You're going to cheer people up. You're going to be nice and kind and happy. Now, some of you already do that, but some of us don't. Okay? And we're going to, I'm going to not do my typical hermit quiet sneak in and out of everywhere I go and not have anybody talk to me is the goal. And, uh, and thing. I'm, I'm going to go out and we're going to try to just make everybody happy. And just be joyful and just go around and bring cheer everywhere we go. Amen. 
<laughs> well, I just lost my chair. Everybody just, really? Do I have to? And uh, and 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 I'm and you know what? We're, we're why? Because you know what? We should try to make the world a better place. Because it's hard enough without us being hurtful. We should feed people. We should help people who are needy. People who have problems, burdens. Uh, the guy down the street has a hard time mowing his lawn. We should mow his lawn or get get. I mean, just let's just make the world a better place. Yeah. And we should do that because we accept that it's a, it's a messed up place. Number two, stay close to the Lord to be protected. I'm going to go to this. Let's go to Psalms. Stay close to the Lord to be protected. What do I mean by that? Because you're in a world of great danger and great trouble and it's a messed up world. God will protect those who are close to him in most things. Not everything. Bad things can still happen to us, but there's just a bunch of promises that when you're near to God, you're in the shelter of His hand. And nothing can go through once you're close to God and get to you. So five things are flying at you and they would get to you without God. God says, you need one of those. You need two of those. I'm allowing those through. And you know what? If you stay close to God in a sinker's world, a lot less bad things happen. Things happen. But it's filtered when you're close to God. Uh, let's look. Psalm 91. I think I'll start there. Psalm 91. It says, He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There's so many beautiful verses in here. Verse 3, Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers. Under his wings shalt thou trust. He, his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence, the disease that waketh, walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand and it shall not come nigh unto thee in other words God is protecting you now some good people go to war and they die but it's allowed but you know what when God's people and I can just attest this in my own personal life been in so much danger in so many dangerous areas all over the world and all over America and the most dangerous areas in America and dangerous areas all over the world I want to say not not a drop of blood has ever been spilt not a bruise uh, because God has protected me. Now, there may be a day, and God says, you know, I'm going to allow this person to rob you today. And that's part of being in a sin-cursed world, and it's allowed. Look, I know a pastor, I met a pastor at one time. This pastor got stabbed 12 times by a guy. Left him for dead. Left the pastor for dead after he robbed him. Later on, the pastor was out soul winning, was witnessing, and dawned on this is the guy who stabbed me 12 times and left me for dead. And won him to Christ. You know what? God used that. You see that? He used that to get that man saved. To show the forgiveness of God. So God allowed that thing through. But a whole bunch of things, if you're in the hand of God, God will say, I'm going to protect you. God's, God says, I'm going to allow this. I'm going to use it. But many things will get filtered out if you're close to God. He that stays in the shadow of the Almighty. Uh, let's go to Psalm 37. All of Psalm 37 is beautiful and, and says wonderful things about in the presence of God. But I'll just read a few verses. Psalm 37 and verse 1. Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Uh, just so many verses here. Uh, verse 16. Let's skip down to there. A little that the righteous hath is better than the, than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. The Lord knoweth the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed for the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. So the world goes into Great Depression. You serve God, my God shall supply all of your needs. Needs. God will still take care of us. Now, might we be a little skinnier? Might we lose some nice clothes? Might we not have nice things we have right now? Yeah. But you know what? We'll be okay. 
because yeah. we're in the hand of God. Stay close to the Lord. It's not for everybody. God takes care of you. He protects us uh, above and beyond a sin-cursed world, and He can make things anything. He can stop anything. And the second thing He does, He makes everything that does happen to you work together for your good. So some things are going to slip through and be allowed. But all things work together for good to them who love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. God said, you're going to go through some hard times. You're going to have a bad thing happen. However, in that bad thing, I'm going to work it together for your good. That's protection in a sin-cursed world. It's a wonderful thing to have that, the hand of God. It is such a wonderful, safe place to be under the wings, under, in the hand of God. Where in a sin-cursed world and all kinds of bad things happen, you know nothing's going to happen that God is not allowing. That's the way to live joyfully in a sin-cursed world. The way to live joyfully in a sin-cursed world. Next, don't think of this world as your permanent home. Don't think of this world as your permanent home. 1 Peter 2. 1 Peter 2. And verse 11 and 12. It's one memory verse there. It says, Dear to beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against your soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they go against you as evildoers, uh, they may by your good works, uh, which they shall behold also, uh, glorify God on the, in the day of visitation. First Peter chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. Don't think of this world as your, your permanent home. Strangers, parakos is the Greek word. It means having a home near an alien resident. Pilgrims. You're supposed to think of yourself in this world as a stranger and a pilgrim. Pilgrims. Big, long Greek word. I'm going to try to say. It's a resident foreigner. They're similar, just a little bit different. Yeah, imagine it this way. <clears throat> Um, we've been, we're flying out of Canada on, on the trip. Let's just say I, I just go up to Canada, and I'm going up there for 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 a month, and just going to take it easy and, and and watch hockey and whatever they do up there. And uh, I'm going to go up to Canada, and uh, a and uh, <clears throat> and I go up to Canada, and all of a sudden uh, Canada gets a scorching heat. And it goes up to 115 degrees in Canada. And all of a sudden, the trees start catching on fire, and the air turns terrible, and, and all of a sudden, the whole system starts breaking down, and power lines go down because all the fires and the trees going down, and power goes out, and the country starts being going to disaster, and all of a sudden, with the power out and the security down, and radios down, people start rising up and attacking, and crime starts breaking out. <clears throat> Canadians are going, our world's ruined, and I'm going... I'm glad I'm going back to America. Right? Because I'm only just in Canada for a while. And I don't want Canada to be all messed up. You know what? Canada's not my permanent home. I'm going back to America and I'll be all right. What you need to do is think of this world you live in is not your permanent home. Your permanent home's in heaven. You're strangers and pilgrims in here. Look, if I'm in a hotel and the hotel is falling to pieces, I'm there one night. I'm leaving this dump tomorrow. I'll just get. I'll leave and pff. they don't want to maintain it. They don't want to maintain it. But you know what? It's not my permanent home. My home's in heaven. Yes, sir. We're seated in heavenly places. Our citizenship is in heaven. The Bible says. That's why Jesus said, "Let not your heart be troubled." In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Don't worry. Don't be troubled. I know the world's messed up. You're going to have all kinds of troubles. But in my Father's house there's many mansions. It's going to be okay. Because you're not, this isn't your permanent dwelling place. So what if the world gets worse and worse? Past the world's getting worse and worse. Yeah. It would probably, it might probably will. We're coming toward the end. What are we going to do? It's a good day today, isn't it? <laughs> Got food today? Yeah. Got shelter today? All right, good. Hey, guess what? We're going to heaven. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if America changes and becomes this and this and this and this? I'm a citizen of heaven. I'm going to heaven someday. I know this world's messed up. I don't expect this world to become angelic. 
you know what? I'm glad heaven's not falling to pieces. Amen. I'm glad we're not going to get a bad president in heaven. <laughs> I'm glad that my mansion in heaven isn't going to have the plumbing break. <laughs> but down here, plumbing breaks. Okay? And I say, yeah, it's the world we live in. Stuff happens. But you know what? In heaven, everything's good. You're just as pilgrims and 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 and, uh, and strangers. Just uh, just realize that this isn't your permanent home. Don't be too upset about it. If understand that the world's messed up and it's getting messed up, and the, the devil is the god of this world. He has a lot of authority here. He has a lot of a lot of power here, and he gets his way here. And 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 you know what? He does some bad things, and he messes the world up. But you know what? You're going to be in heaven for trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of years. I can't imagine in heaven when you've been there for when you've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun, to think, man, I can. It's good. You you know, in my mind, I'm going to say, but I'm going to get older. But you know, but man, this is going to break down. Or boy, I'm going to get the bill for this someday. <laughs> All the stuff we think on earth, right? Yeah. In heaven, you're going to be there 10 million years. You're going to be sitting there 10 million years where you're so happy or your face is breaking because you're smiling too big. And then all you're going, this is going to go on forever. Because everything, you know how it is, vacation is going to end. How many of the people, when vacation starts, you're like, oh man, it's already three days into it. <laughs> you like that? And, 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 but, but heaven's vacation forever. Yeah. And free passes into Disneyland. I mean, it's, it's, there's nothing. And, and, and it's, you're never going to get down. And so just, look, okay, you might have a rough life here. And I'm sorry, and it hurts. And I know that our sorrow is real. In this world, you should have tribulation. And, and Jesus said, you're going to have sorrow. But man, you're just going to all go away someday in heaven. If you're born again. Yeah. And so you don't make this home, this, this world, your permanent home. <clears throat> I get to live in a little apartment. You might say... I wish I had a better car. I wish I was healthier. I know. I understand. <laughs> but you have heaven. Yeah. All of us do. Next. Make it better. Make it better. We, we read, uh, and I, I got to finish up here because of time. <laughs> Make this world better. Verse 12 here. Having... Your conversation honest among the Gentiles, whereas they speak evil against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they have seen, glorify God in the day of visitation. Make, make it better. Let your light so shine before men. They may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, the Bible says if you have, if you have, and you see somebody who has needs, don't shut your bowels of compassion from them, but give to them. Okay? Make the world better. Don't be part of the problem of a sin-cursed world of nastiness and pain and sorrow. Look, add blessings to people's life. Love people. Be kind. Be the peacemaker. Give to the needy. And, and be a blessing in the world. When everybody else is nasty at work, let one person kind of shine a light in there. <clears throat> and make the world better. Next. Remember the Lord overcompensates. Matthew 5. This is the, the strange thing about all this. Is... <clears throat> For the suffering we go through in this world, God understands. And what he does, as he says, if you sorrow along the path of my will, I'm going to compensate you for your sorrow. Your suffering will be repaid. The deal is, about it is, is God overpays. Amen. When God compensates, it's ridiculous how he compensates. And he cannot explain it to us, so he just kind of tells us, you do not understand, but you're suffering, you're going to be glad you went through it. Because I'm going to compensate you so much for suffering in eternity, that you're going to wish you had suffered more. <laughs> it's all over the Bible, and it's crazy, but that's what God does. God says, I know it hurts, but I've got, I, I, don't, I have an unlimited bank account. So I'm going to really compensate you. Amen. Matthew 5. Blessed, that means blessed, you, you're, you're a blessed person, are the, are the poor in spirit, for, this is verse 3, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed? Yeah. 
Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which you hunger, thirst the righteous. Blessed are these people. Blessed, uh, verse uh, uh, 11, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all men of evil, evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice in that day and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so persecuted the prophets which are before you. God says you are blessed if you mourn. You are blessed if you're persecuted. Amen. Up in heaven, somebody... <clears throat> who gets persecuted and they're laying down there uh, they're laying down there up in heaven and they're sitting there in their, their heavenly recliner and they're sitting there and angels are fanning them and dropping grapes in their mouth <laughs> and they're drinking heavenly water and all the angels are comforting them and you're going hey why don't I have one of those chairs oh you didn't get persecuted oh man <laughs> and you're going to wish you would have suffered more for the cause of Christ. You say, man, why couldn't I have been in, born in Iraq or Iran or China or someone, the government come after me? I don't get the fan in the grapes. I just get my mansion over there. And actually, you won't do that because you won't have your fallen nature. But you know what? <clears throat> it's very confusing. <clears throat> but you know what? You're blessed when you suffer because God overcompensates. Romans 8, I think it's verse 16. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. The blessings you get from God are so incredible that it cannot be compared with your suffering. It's not like, it, it's like you went and your boss says, you know what, I, look, today i got a problem. Every toilet's clogged. Go around, unclog all the toilets. You say, man, unclog the toilets? That's not my job. He says, look, just trust me, unclog toilets. All right, fine. Uncl and so you spend the whole day, eight hours at your job. You're unclogging toilets. You come back and say, all right, they're all done. He says, all right, <clears throat> look, here's $150,000. Thank you. <laughs> Whoa! You get any more toilets? <laughs> Why? Because it was overcompensation. And you said, I'm, and you tell me, man, I'm glad I got to clean the toilets, right? The suffering of the toilets was overcompensated so much, you're glad you're the one who got to do it. Right? Yeah. Now, for regular wages, you might complain, but God says, I, I, great is your reward. I'm going to overcompensate you for your suffering so you can have joy in a sin-cursed world because God overcompensates for these things. God does on earth also, and I, oh, I wish I had time to elaborate on this. The Bible says God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith. Yeah. <clears throat> All those poor countries. But understand, people in poor countries have more faith than Americans. Yeah. And they're going to get a lot more in heaven because of it. Yep. God's compensating. God gives grace to the lowly, the Bible says. I don't understand it, but I can just tell you this. Kids in poor countries are happier than kids in America. Yeah. And all my, all the people from poor countries in this room, which is a lot of them, are all going, because <laughs> the kids around there are going, <laughs> and they're kicking. I remember, I don't know what country I was in. I was watching them. They, their soccer ball was a gigantic roll of tape. I mean, it was this big. That was their soccer ball. And they just rolled tape until they had the soccer ball. No, it, that's what, it, was, it was plastic. It was, they took a bunch of shrink wrap, they balled it up, and they taped it. And that was their soccer ball. And they were having a blast. And here's a kid in America. Mom, how can this a two-year-old iPad? <laughs> but God's given grace to them. And they don't know how bad they have it, and God's making them happy. And they're, they're, why? Because God knows what suffering's like. He knows what the world's like. He didn't want it like that. And He loves us and He compensates both on earth and in eternity. Can I just tell you, <clears throat> I gotta finish, but you can live joyously in a sin cursed world. Understand that's why things happen, they do, but you can still have a joyful life in a sin cursed world. In this world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And do not be the foolish person. And, and my last point is just uh, enjoy the good things. The Bible says in 1 Timothy 6, 7, he gives, 6, 17, He gives us all things richly to enjoy. When things are good, really enjoy them. When your health's good, praise God. When you have food and it's good food, woo! 
man. <laughs> Instead of being spoiled, uh, they fruit this son of gravy. <laughs> Griping by you when you got a good meal in front of you. This barbecue's too tangy. <laughs> Stop. If you have food, if your health's good, if you're if you have a r nice house, good God's given you good things in a sin cursed world. Praise God if your kids are healthy, enjoy it. All kinds of bad things can happen to good people's kids because of the world, because the DNA's messed up. And people have deformities and, 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 and there's diseases and germs that didn't used to be in this world. So praise God and enjoy things when they're good. And don't be the person who only notices the bad. But praise God for the good. And enjoy. Man, I'm, I'm healthy right now. Praise God. My family's all alive and healthy. Praise God. Family's all in church. Woo! I got a good church. Look, the, the church, church can get really messed up. Yeah. You got a good church? What you do? Praise God. Yes. Got air conditioning? Praise God. Your car runs? Praise God. <laughs> Enjoy the good things. Enjoy them. Praise God. And, and don't be spoiled. In a sin-cursed world, we should enjoy that we happen to have pretty easy lives in a sin-cursed world. And pretty secure. And pretty blessed. And praise God for it.